Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sonal Saran and I'm working as assistant professor in the department of radio diagnosis in Trishikesh and I have a special interest in musculoskeletal imaging. So I present a series of video tutorial which deals with radiological diagnosis of bone tumor. So starting with the first in the series is this how to approach a bone tumor. So bone tumors can be classified into three types. First is the primary which can again be divided into benign or malignant and uh, second is the secondary or metastatic which is actually the most common malignant bone tumor and third is the tumor like process which includes multiple lesions which are actually not tumor but they mimic or behave like a tumor. So we require uh, multiple informations uh, before we make any diagnosis of bone tumor. The first and foremost is the age of the patient. So age of the patient is very important because there are certain groups of tumor which are seen in younger population and there are certain groups of tumor which are seen in elderly age group. So age is the most important factor for making a diagnosis of bone tumor. Then we need to know whether the lesion is single or multiple. So uh, mostly the tumors are single. However, we can see multiple lesions uh, like in this case of multiple osteochondromas. So multiple lesions can be seen in cases of fibrous dysplasia, osteochondroma, and chondroma, or they can be seen in malignant entities like multiple myeloma or metastasis. So multiplicity uh, can be seen in both benign and malignant entities. Then uh, location in the skeleton is uh, very important because every tumor has three or four favorite locations within the skeleton. So there are certain group of tumors which are more predominantly seen in the axial skeleton and there are certain tumors which are more commonly seen in the appendicular skeleton. So we need to know the uh, favorite location of certain tumors. Then site of long bone involvement. So within a long bone, Tumor can be localized to epiphysis, metaphysis, or diaphysis. And uh, we can also classify this location based on the age group. So we need to know whether the physis is open or it is closed. So we, we need to know uh, the site of certain tumors within the long bone for making a accurate diagnosis of its entity. Then comes the pattern of growth and bone destruction. So bone tumor can have a geographic pattern of bone destruction or moth eaten and permeative pattern of bone destruction. So geographic pattern of bone destruction points towards benign entity whereas malignant lesions generally have moth eaten or permeative pattern of bone destruction. So let's see this case. It's a case of osteosarcoma and we can see there is a permeative pattern of bone destruction and this lesion is having a wide zone of transition. We cannot actually draw a line that distinguish uh, deceased bone from the healthy bone. So this lesion is having a wide zone of transition and is having a permeative pattern of bone destruction. This is a malignant bone tumor. And this is a case of a giant cell tumor which is actually having a geographic pattern of bone destruction and it is having a sharp margin of transition. However, there are certain uh, exceptions to this rule. So multiple myeloma and METs can have a geographic pattern of bone destruction, whereas infection, which is a benign entity, it can have permeative pattern of bone destruction. Coming to the types of periosteal reactions, so there are multiple types of periosteal reaction which can be categorized into non-aggressive and aggressive types. So uh, I will deal with the periosteal reaction in a separate video, uh, but this is a case of uh, benign looking periosteal reaction and this is a case of osteosarcoma uh, giving a aggressive periosteal reaction. Coming to the pattern of matrix mineralization, so matrix can be uh, of osseous type like in this case of osteosarcoma or it, it can be of cartilaginous matrix like in this case of chondrosarcoma of the scapula where the matrix is looking like a ring or arc pattern or a flocculent stippled pattern of uh, mineralization. Finally, the soft tissue involvement. So if there is soft tissue involvement, then it points towards aggressive bone tumor. Let's talk about the modalities which we can use for evaluation of the bone tumor, starting with the plain radiograph, which is the best and the a most important radiological investigation that we use for making diagnosis of bone tumor. 
Second is the computer tomography or CT scan, uh, which is indicated only uh, for certain uh, reasons, like if the tumor is located in an area which is difficult to evaluate on plain radiograph, like if the tumor is located in the sacrum or in the scapula. So we can order computer tomography for this. And the CT is also good for seeing the matrix mineralization and cortical destruction. Then MRI. There are four or five indications for which we need MRI. So first is the extent of medullary involvement in a bone. So lesion may look like having a small extent of involvement on brain radiograph, but when we order MRI, we see there is extensive medullary involvement and there are presence of cap lesions. MRI is also good for, actually the best for evaluation of neurovascular involvement and we can use contrast in the evaluation of uh, bone tumor and if the lesion is having uh, extensive enhancement then it indicates viability and we can target the most enhancing area of the tumor for uh, the biopsy and MRI is actually used for uh, follow-up of the patients who are on chemotherapy and last is the bone scintigraphy which is uh, ordered for uh, the evaluation of multiple Metastatic lesions in the skeleton can also be used for the evaluation of osteoid osteoma. So what is periosteal reaction? It is the response of the cortical bone to many possible insults. So that insult can be a tumor, it can be infection, it can be a trauma like stress fracture, it can be arthritis or the cause can be metabolic. So there are multiple causes which can lead to periosteal reaction. So uh, what are the types of periosteal reaction? So periosteal reaction can be categorized into two types, non-aggressive and aggressive. In non-aggressive category, we have a thin unilamellar periosteal reaction, thick solid type of periosteal reaction, irregular type of periosteal reaction or a septated type of periosteal reaction. Whereas in aggressive category, we can have multilamellar onion skin type of periosteal reaction, hair on end type of periosteal reaction, sunburst type of periosteal reaction, disorganized type of periosteal reaction, and Cordman angle type of periosteal reaction. So let's see non aggressive pattern first. So this is a case of uh, extensive fibrous dysplasia involving right femoral head, neck, and proximal diaphysis. So as we can see, there is presence of a thin unilamellar type of periosteal reaction in this benign entity. This is the case of a chronic osteomyelitis involving distal metaphysis of femur where we can see there is thick solid periosteal reaction here. So this is the case of a thick solid periosteal reaction. This is a case of osteofibrous dysplasia involving tibia where we can see presence of septated type of periosteal reaction. So these were uh, the non-aggressive pattern of periosteal reaction. Now let's see the aggressive category. This is a case of even sarcoma in which we can see multi-layered or onion skin type of periosteal reaction and it is also interrupted in this area. So this is aggressive periosteal reaction. This is a case of osteosarcoma in which we can see both hair on end and sunburst pattern of periosteal reaction. This is again a case of having sarcoma in which we can see a disorganized pattern of periosteal reaction. This is again a case of osteosarcoma in which uh, apart from the hair on end and sunburst pattern of periosteal reaction, we can see lifting of periosteum by a tumor tissue which gives an appearance of Codman triangle. So this is a Codman uh, triangle type of periosteal reaction. Apart from tumor, we can have multiple other entities which can lead to periosteal reaction. So this is a case of psoriatic arthritis where we can see presence of a thick solid periosteal reaction along with erosions. This is a radiograph of infant showing physiological periostitis involving both femurs. 
is the case of uh, bronchogenic carcinoma and secondary to the bronchogenic carcinoma as a paraneoplastic syndrome. This patient has developed hypertrophic uh, osteoarthropathy uh, representing periosteal reaction in the lower end of femur. This is a case of a stress fracture involving metatarsal at the time of recent trauma and uh, after its healing. So here we can see a disorganized pattern of periosteal reaction and after healing there is only thin solid periosteal reaction. Periosteal reaction can also be seen in chronic venous stasis leading to disorganized type of uh, periosteal reaction in the lower tibia and fibula. So this was all about periosteal reaction. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you.